Hi, this is Chris from Team Phoenix. Welcome back. And I bring to you today another true crime case. This case comes out of Las Vegas. And this is Amanda Sharp Jefferson, 26-year-old mother. And she appeared in court this week following her arrest in the deaths of her two baby daughters there just seems to be no end to the evil in this world now the 26 year old mother is accused of killing her one year old daughter rose and her two month old daughter lily and they believe that this happened sometime between last thursday and friday now, one of the shocking aspects of this case is that the offender, uh, Amanda, apparently told the baby's father that the girl's organs would be worth a lot of money. The baby's father has been identified as J. Quan Singleton. And the story is that uh, the father arrived home on Friday last Friday to find the children dead immediately called 911 paramedics were dispatched and they declared both girls were dead on arrival the father is said to have found the children stacked on top of one another in a in a baby crib now in a statement that um, the father made to the media he, he said that he basically left the home around 7 30 p.m on thursday evening to visit his older daughter who was staying with his grandmother and at that time he claimed everything seemed to be normal didn't, you know he didn't have any concerns um, according to the, the police statement the the father came came home about noon the next day this was friday and noticed that both children were in a corner in the in the living room area he went up to both children noticed that that both children were cold and both children were seemingly and quite obviously deceased now it's unclear exactly how they died although detectives have said that they have a very good idea what the cause of the injury is for rose the one-year-old um, early reports though and from what the father is saying that um, he seems to suggest that both children were drowned and that's what he initially told the told the police now apparently they have been a couple since 2018 and until recently the father said they didn't really have any problems however a couple of weeks ago her behavior had started to noticeably change now as I say, he told police that amanda was fine on, on thursday evening but he has mentioned that in the past couple of weeks she did start to talk about um, the alter spirit world um, and she claimed that uh, well, she accused him of cheating on her with a uh, with his spirit wife uh, i mean if it obviously piqued my interest into look looking at what this uh alter spirit world is all about and so if we um if we reference astrology.com um we can see here uh, how to build an ancestral altar to connect with the spirit world um, and it apparently says, I mean, this is the time of year, apparently, that um, people seem to get very interested in this kind of stuff. It says the end of October brings us a slew of opportunities to honour those who have passed to the other side, including Samhain or Halloween on October 31st, Dia de la Muertes on November 1st and 2nd, and All Saints or All Souls Day on November 1st and 2nd. After all, this is a time of year when people say that the veil is thin, meaning that the invisible barrier between the worlds of the living and the dead 
is at its most porous. This incident kind of made me, th made me think of uh, Laurie, Vallow and Chad. They're always talking about this uh, veil, you know, t to the other side. Um, it just goes on to say, ast astrologically, we are also supposed supported in our desire to connect with the with the spirit world. One of the simplest and widespread practices that can help you hold space for those who are gone, but not forgotten, is the creation of an ancestral altar in your home. Building an ancestral altar is a rewarding and heart-opening practice, and anyone can participate no matter what you know about your own ancestry. So interesting there, it's talking about building an, an altar um, to, to the spirit world. Uh, so, the father goes on to say that um, apparently she was going through a spiritual and soul type of thing where she thought that she wasn't in this reality, she was in the spiritual and soul reality. He added that uh, he felt like him not coming back on that Thursday night might have got to her. He realised when he entered the home that the girls were unresponsive and apparently he said that um, Amanda, his, his partner, just uh, kept shushing him and at one point she, she made a statement that uh, that the girls' organs would be worth a lot of money. Uh, so it seems like she really was out of her mind. I can't really uh, comprehend what, what on earth she was she was thinking now she did go on to later tell the police that uh, she did not have any children and she also claimed that she did not know Jay Kwan the, the, ch the child's father and she believed that she was being set up she also claimed that she lived alone in the apartment and that she found the two girls who appeared to be dead when she woke up that morning and walked into the, the into the living room. As to say, she she claims it was a setup. According to her, somebody must have entered the apartment and set her up for the death of the two children, who were not hers. She believed the children, their toys, and their strollers were planted in the apartment by somebody. And according to police, she didn't she didn't call for help. When she found the children dead, instead she decided to take a shower, um, believe it or not. Um, police asked the, well, police did ask her what she meant when she said the girl's organs were worth money. And in response, she said that she saw a movie where people made money on body parts after a person died. What a crazy story. Um, I mean, it's, they're apparently saying it's too early in the investigation to determine if if the mother suffered from a severe mental illness. I mean, going by what she's done, I would certainly think that she suffers with a severe mental illness. They have said they would definitely not rule it out at this point. Now Amanda was um, she was arrested on Friday on two counts of open murder. Now open murder is basically a combination of first and secondary murder and also the lesser charges like voluntary and involuntary manslaughter and apparently they do it that way and then the jury that may then determine which charges, you know, which charges are appropriate based on, based on the uh, details, you know, of the case and the evidence that they have. So, as I say, she was arrested on Friday on two counts of open murder, and here we can see she appeared in court on Tuesday at the Las Vegas Regional Justice Centre. And that's her there, second on the left. And apparently she denied being under the influence of drugs or alcohol. But police said that there might have been marijuana in the apartment. 
court records list one prior arrest for Amanda. She apparently back in January 2017, she pleaded to a or pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor for destruction of uh, property. The case was later dismissed. So she's got no previous um, charges of anything other than that. So in court, the judge made sure that she understood the charges that uh, have been filed against her. Her attorney attempted to make the argument that uh, against media being at the arraignment, but the, the judge allowed that. And the attorney, or her, her attorney, also made two motions, one requesting the, that, um, that she have the right to get bail, which, as far as I know, was denied, and another to preserve evidence. And her next court date is set for November 24th. So, as I say, a very shocking and, uh, and tragic story with a, with, a, with a crazy twist. I mean, it, it appears that um, this woman obviously had severe mental issues talking about spiritual worlds and and all that kind of thing and it's just a a partner obviously had no idea that, that you know this was going to happen um but it just illustrates how how dangerous it can be um how what people's mindsets can be in when they start talking about other worlds and you know trying to cross over veils to, to spirits on on the other side it's always going to raise and always should raise huge alarm bells with with people and as this case illustrates you know th there's no limit to how crazy and how devastating somebody's actions can be who is in that kind of mindset um, but as i say she is uh Amanda's next due in court on November 24th.